I'll just go ahead and wait for that one. All right, hi, I'm Dusty Arab. Yeah, legit, I can't make this shit up. Um, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, a writer, and a mom of two. And I'm also 24. And that's usually the kicker for most people. When I had my kids when I was 20, or my, didn't have both of them. When I had my daughter when I was 20, the odds were stacked against me. I was that kid who was really smart and got married a month out of high school. Um, and not long after, I found myself pregnant. Um, I worked two jobs my entire pregnancy, and then during my third trimester, I started college. My finals were on my due date, but my daughter was gracious enough to wait to come, you know, four days later. As you can imagine, I'm not your average mom. So I suffered debilitating postpartum depression. I got divorced, and I attempted suicide. Obviously, it didn't work. <laughs> Stepping into motherhood was a massive struggle for me. So I just, I had no support. I had no support. And I'm not the only person out there who's been in this situation before. I had no female role models to turn to. So I started a quest. And I went through and looked at all the books. I was going to read all the books to figure out what made an awesome mom. Of course, when all there is is what to expect when you're expecting, you're not going to learn much. It turned out that nothing that I read actually applied to me. So, you know, instead of anything being helpful, everything just kind of started making things worse. It made it worse and worse and worse because everything affirmed that no matter what I did, because I wasn't a traditional mom, there was no way I was going to be a good mom, clearly. I didn't like the sound of that. So I started on a new quest to figure out what exactly it took to make a great mom. I started researching and interviewing the most amazing women that I could get to sit down with me about 50 so far, um, and I've discovered a handful of things that I'm going to share with you now. So there are three major problems when you're stepping into motherhood. There's the triple threat, which I'll explain here in a minute. There are our cultural myths, also explain in a minute, and the stories that we tell ourselves. So the triple threat that almost every mother goes through, insecurity, isolation, and identity. So with all the fears of being like or unlike our mothers, or you know, trying to be as good as the mom next door who appears to have her shit all together when her house is just as messy as yours is, um, and you know, just trying to do things right, it's no wonder we feel insecure. I mean, it's mass media all over again. You already know that. With isolation, I mean, we are more connected than we have ever been. And yet, instead of using the social networks to actually connect with each other, most of the time we don't. We propagate the same cultural myths that we've been fed, like Supermom. There are three myths here that I'd like to elaborate a little bit on. First is the myth of obligation. Usually this goes something like, I would love to do X, but I can't because I'm Y. It's, this is the excuse myth. So I cannot be a writer because I'm a mom and I don't have time. Bullshit. You know it's bullshit. Second myth, the myth of the rescue. The myth of the rescue is talking about anything that someone or something out there is going to save you not going to happen. And the third myth, I can't remember. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. It's all right. The third piece of that is the stories that we tell ourselves. The stories that we tell ourselves matter so much. And the more that I wrote and the more that I researched, I discovered that oftentimes the stories we tell ourselves aren't actually accurate. They're the stories that we think about ourselves. They're the stories society is telling us. And then there are the hero stories that we're actually aspiring to. And those are really the stories we need to be telling, especially about the story of motherhood. So the conclusion I've come to is that the most rebellious thing you can do as a mom or a dad is maintain your individual identity. Now, why is that? Well, I think it's pretty clear. If you can't stand in your own identity, how on earth are you going to help develop someone else's? So what does it take to be a rebel mama or dad? One, live outside the labels. I'm going to go all fight club on here, here for a second. You are not your khakis. You are not your venti vanilla half-calf latte. And you are certainly more than Aiden's mom. You have every right to have dreams and priorities outside of your children. Number two, define your values. They're not going to be the same as anyone else's, but knowing them is going to, be able to, is going to help you be able to make decisions much, much more deliberately. And this is crucial. Three, you have to share your story. 
Share your story because it empowers you and it empowers the people around you. Let's see how many slides I got here. Okay. <laughs> um, number four, pursue your truth. I don't care if it's gardening, travel, whatever, do it. Because you have one limited finite life. How are you going to spend it? Thank you.